Imagine a perfect life shattered in an instant. A gunshot echoes through a quiet neighborhood, tearing apart a family and exposing dark secrets. This isn't fiction. It's the true story of Octavia Fairweather, her husband Oscar, and a betrayal that would leave one fighting for their life and another behind bars. What drives a respected teacher to pull the trigger on her own husband? The answer lies in a twisted tale of love, deceit, and a mother-in-law who crossed an unforgivable line. In the picturesque town of Creekside, Octavia and Oscar Fairweather were the couple everyone aspired to be. High school sweethearts turned power couple. They seemed to have it all. Successful careers, a beautiful home, and a love that withstood the test of time. But beneath the surface, a storm was brewing, one that would eventually tear their world apart. Octavia, with her artist's soul and warm smile, was beloved by her students and colleagues at Creekside High. Her classroom was a haven of creativity, where she nurtured young talents and inspired a love for art. Students often spoke of how Mrs. Fairweather had changed their lives, giving them confidence and a means of expression they never knew they had. Her annual student art exhibitions were highlights of the school calendar, drawing praise from parents and community leaders alike. Oscar, on the other hand, was the epitome of business success. His sharp mind and charisma had propelled him to the top of the corporate ladder at a local investment firm. Colleagues described him as driven and ambitious, always the first to arrive at the office and the last to leave. His clients trusted him implicitly, impressed by his keen financial insights and his ability to navigate even the most turbulent markets. Together, they were a force to be reckoned with, their names synonymous with success and community involvement. The Fair Weathers were fixtures at local charity events, often leading fundraising efforts for various causes. Their home in the prestigious Oakwood Estates was a showpiece, featured in local magazines for its blend of modern luxury and Octavia's artistic touches. But life isn't always as picture-perfect as it seems. For years, Octavia and Oscar had been struggling with infertility, a silent battle that was slowly eroding the foundation of their marriage. The stress of failed treatments and dashed hopes began to take its toll. Each negative pregnancy test felt like a personal failure, a reminder of the one thing they couldn't achieve despite their best efforts. Oscar threw himself into his work, spending long hours at the office. He rationalized it as necessary to cover the mounting medical bills, but deep down, he knew he was avoiding the pain he saw in Octavia's eyes every time they faced another disappointment. Octavia, in turn, found solace in her art and her students. She poured her emotions into her paintings, creating vivid, often melancholic pieces that she kept hidden from Oscar. Enter Cordelia Prescott, Octavia's free-spirited mother. A former photojournalist with a zest for life, Cordelia had always been more of a friend than a traditional mother figure to Octavia. In her younger days, Cordelia had traveled the world, capturing images of far-off places and diverse cultures. Her cottage on the outskirts of town was a testament to her adventurous spirit, filled with eclectic souvenirs and framed photographs from her globe-trotting days. As the strain in her marriage grew, Octavia found herself spending more time with Cordelia, seeking comfort and support in her mother's unconventional wisdom. They would spend long evenings on Cordelia's porch, sipping wine and talking about life, love, and the complexities of relationships. Cordelia, drawing from her own experiences, encouraged Octavia to communicate more openly with Oscar to fight for her marriage. What Octavia couldn't have known was that her search for solace would set in motion a chain of events that would end in tragedy. As Octavia confided in her mother about her marital troubles, Oscar too found himself drawn to Cordelia's warmth and understanding. Initially, his visits to the cottage were innocent enough, dropping off groceries, helping with small repairs, or simply checking in on his mother-in-law at Octavia's request. But as time went on, Oscar found himself looking forward to these visits more and more. Cordelia's carefree attitude and worldly outlook were a stark contrast to the tension he felt at home. She listened without judgment, offering a perspective that was both refreshing and dangerous. On a crisp autumn evening, while Octavia was busy preparing for a student art exhibition, Oscar made a fateful decision to visit Cordelia alone. Under the guise of checking on his mother-in-law, he found himself opening up about his frustrations and fears. The pressure at work, the strain of the fertility treatments, the growing distance between him and Octavia, it all came pouring out. Cordelia, with her empathetic nature and eyes so similar to Octavia's, provided the comfort Oscar craved. As they sat in her small, cluttered living room, surrounded by mementos of her travels, something shifted between them. 
A comforting touch lingered too long. A gaze held more meaning than it should have. That night, a line was crossed that could never be uncrossed. In the weeks that followed, Oscar and Cordelia's relationship deepened into a full-blown affair. They manufactured reasons to see each other, stealing moments of passion whenever they could. Oscar suddenly needed help with his golf swing, while Cordelia developed an interest in investment strategies. Their clandestine meetings became more frequent and daring. The thrill of their secret encounters blinded them to the potential consequences of their actions. They justified their betrayal with whispered excuses. Oscar felt neglected. Cordelia was lonely since her husband's death. In their minds, they had found something special, something that transcended the boundaries of conventional relationships. Their affair consumed them, blinding them to the pain they were causing. In Cordelia's bedroom, a space once reserved for solitary nights, they now created a world of secret passion. The creak of bed springs and hushed whispers became a symphony of their illicit love, playing out against the backdrop of familial betrayal. But secrets have a way of coming to light, and the web of lies surrounding Oscar and Cordelia's affair began to unravel. Octavia, with her artist's eye for detail, started noticing subtle changes in both her husband and her mother's behavior. A lingering scent of unfamiliar perfume on Oscar's clothes, hushed phone conversations that ended abruptly when she entered the room, and unexplained absences all began to add up. At first, Octavia tried to dismiss her suspicions. She told herself she was being paranoid, that the stress of their fertility struggles was making her imagine things. But as the days passed, the evidence became harder to ignore. Oscar's late nights at the office didn't match up with the charges she found on their credit card statements. Cordelia, once eager to spend time with her daughter, now seemed distant and preoccupied. Determined to uncover the truth, Octavia began her own investigation. She checked credit card statements, noting several charges at restaurants and hotels that Oscar had never mentioned. She drove by her mother's cottage at odd hours, her heart sinking when she spotted Oscar's car parked down the street on evenings when he was supposedly working late. Each new piece of evidence felt like a dagger to her heart, slowly chipping away at the trust that had been the foundation of her life. Octavia's inner turmoil began to affect her work. Her students and colleagues noticed the change in her demeanor, the dark circles under her eyes, the tremor in her hands as she demonstrated brush techniques, the forced smile that never quite reached her eyes. The day Octavia's world shattered began like any other. It was a Saturday, and she had spent the morning at school putting the finishing touches on the student art exhibition. Oscar had left early, mumbling something about a golf game with clients. As Octavia drove home, her mind preoccupied with last-minute details for the upcoming show, she decided on a whim to stop by her mother's cottage. As Octavia turned onto the quiet lane leading to Cordelia's home, her heart nearly stopped. There, parked behind the cottage, was Oscar's sleek black sedan. For a moment, Octavia sat in her car, hands gripping the steering wheel, trying to calm her racing heart. She told herself there could be an innocent explanation, but deep down, she knew. With trembling legs, Octavia approached the cottage. The curtains were drawn, but through a gap, she could see movement inside. Taking a deep breath, she used her key to unlock the door, pushing it open as quietly as possible. What she discovered there would change her life forever. Through a gap in the curtains, Octavia saw Oscar and Cordelia locked in an intimate embrace. The sight of her husband and mother together, oblivious to the world around them, sent Octavia reeling. In that moment, her entire world collapsed. The confrontation that followed was a blur of accusations, tears, and half-hearted explanations. Oscar and Cordelia, caught in their betrayal, could offer little more than stammered apologies and weak excuses. Six months, they admitted. The affair had been going on for six months. Unable to bear their presence any longer, Octavia fled her mother's cottage. She drove aimlessly for hours, her mind replaying the scene over and over. The image of Oscar and Cordelia together burned into her memory, taunting her with every passing mile. By the time she returned home, the sun had set, casting long shadows across the manicured lawn of the house she had once considered her sanctuary. As night fell, Oscar returned home. The air was thick with tension as he entered his usual confident stride replaced by hesitant steps. Octavia watched from the shadows as he hung up his jacket and loosened his tie, the familiar routine now tainted by the knowledge of his betrayal. Oscar called out Octavia's name, his voice strained with apprehension. When she stepped into the light, he visibly flinched. The woman before him bore little resemblance to the vibrant, loving wife he had known. Octavia's eyes were red-rimmed and hollow, her posture rigid with barely contained fury. 
What happened next would be debated in courtrooms and whispered about in Creekside for years to come. In a haze of grief and anger, Octavia retrieved Oscar's handgun from his study, a precaution he had insisted on after a series of break-ins in the neighborhood. When she confronted Oscar in the living room, the gun felt heavy in her hand, a physical manifestation of the weight of betrayal she carried. Oscar's eyes widened in shock and fear as he saw the weapon. He raised his hands, backing away slowly, his words now coming in a panicked rush. He promised to end the affair, to go to counseling, to do whatever it took to save their marriage. But Octavia barely heard him. In her mind, she saw only images of Oscar and Cordelia together, their betrayal playing on an endless loop. In a moment of chaos and heightened emotion, Oscar lunged forward, perhaps trying to disarm her. Octavia's finger tightened on the trigger. The gunshot was deafening in the confines of the room, followed by an eerie silence broken only by the tinkling of shattered glass from a fallen picture frame. Oscar staggered backward, a look of disbelief on his face as he pressed his hand to his chest. Blood seeped between his fingers, staining his crisp white shirt crimson. He collapsed to the floor, gasping for breath, his eyes locked on Octavia in a silent plea. As the reality of what she had done crashed over her, Octavia dropped the gun. It clattered to the hardwood floor, the sound jolting her out of her shocked state. She rushed to Oscar's side, her anger instantly replaced by horror and regret. With trembling hands, she called 911, her voice shaking as she pleaded for an ambulance to hurry. The next few hours were a blur of flashing lights, sirens, and police questioning. Oscar was rushed to the hospital, clinging to life as doctors fought to save him. Octavia found herself in handcuffs, being led away from the home she had lovingly decorated, now a crime scene. As news of the shooting spread through Creekside, the town was thrown into shock. How could this happen to the Fairweathers, the golden couple of their community? Friends, neighbors, and colleagues struggled to reconcile the image of the gentle art teacher they knew with the woman who had shot her husband. The investigation that followed uncovered the tangled web of deceit that had led to that fateful night. Detective Mia Davis, assigned to the case, pieced together the events leading up to the shooting. She interviewed friends, family members, and colleagues, slowly building a picture of a marriage torn apart by infertility struggles and ultimate betrayal. One of the most crucial pieces of evidence came from an unexpected source. Octavia's best friend and fellow art teacher, Zara, came forward with a series of text messages. In the weeks leading up to the shooting, Octavia had confided her growing suspicions to Zara, detailing the signs of infidelity she had noticed. The messages revealed Octavia's emotional turmoil and her struggle to confront the truth, providing valuable insight into her state of mind. As Oscar fought for his life in the hospital, undergoing multiple surgeries, the town of Creekside found itself divided. Some sympathized with Octavia, seeing her as a victim of circumstances pushed to the brink. Others condemned her actions as inexcusable, regardless of the provocation. Cordelia Prescott, racked with guilt and shame, retreated to her cottage, refusing to answer calls or open her door. The weight of her role in the tragedy seemed to age her overnight, her once vibrant demeanor replaced by a haunted, hollow-eyed look. The trial that followed was a media sensation, drawing attention from far beyond the borders of Creekside. The courtroom was packed each day as the prosecutor and defense attorney painted vastly different pictures of Octavia Fairweather. The prosecution, led by ambitious district attorney Vincent Harding, portrayed Octavia as a vengeful woman who had committed a premeditated act of violence. Harding argued that the shooting was not a crime of passion, but a calculated attempt to punish both her husband and her mother for their betrayal. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Harding began in his opening statement, what we have here is not a case of temporary insanity or justifiable action. This is a case of cold-blooded attempted murder. Octavia Fairweather had ample time to consider her actions. She chose to retrieve the gun, she chose to confront her husband, and she chose to pull the trigger. These are the actions of a woman consumed by revenge, not a victim of circumstances. Octavia's defense team, headed by seasoned attorney Eliza Thornton, presented a different narrative. They portrayed Octavia as a victim of circumstances, a woman pushed to the brink by an unthinkable betrayal. The defense emphasized Octavia's impeccable character, her contributions to the community, and the extreme emotional distress she had been under at the time of the shooting. 
Octavia Fairweather is not a criminal, Thornton countered in her opening remarks. She is a woman who suffered years of emotional turmoil, who fought to save her marriage, and who was ultimately betrayed in the most painful way imaginable. On that fateful night, Octavia was not in her right mind. She was acting under extreme emotional distress, her actions fueled by shock and betrayal. Throughout the trial, friends, family members, and colleagues took the stand, each adding layers to the complex portrait of the Fairweather family. The prosecution focused on the cold facts, the affair, the gun, the near-fatal injury. They argued that Octavia had time to think, to make a different choice, but instead, she had chosen violence. The defense, however, countered by highlighting Octavia's years of emotional suffering, her desperation to salvage her marriage, and the sudden, overwhelming wave of betrayal that had driven her to act in a moment of temporary insanity. They brought in expert witnesses, psychologists, who testified to the severe emotional trauma Octavia had endured and its potential to lead to irrational behavior. The turning point in the trial came when Oscar Fairweather took the stand. Now recovered from his injuries, though still bearing the physical and emotional scars of the incident, Oscar's testimony was awaited with bated breath. He described the affair, his guilt, and his own feelings of betrayal. He admitted that he had failed Octavia in many ways, that he had sought solace in Cordelia during a time of weakness, and that he had never intended for things to go so far. When questioned about the night of the shooting, Oscar's voice faltered. He described Octavia as being in a state of shock, as if she was disconnected from reality. It was like looking at a stranger, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. Her eyes, they were empty, lost. I've never seen her like that before. He confirmed that she had been a loving wife, someone who had never shown any signs of violence before that night. His testimony painted a picture of a woman pushed to the brink by emotional trauma, a key point for the defense. As the trial neared its conclusion, the town of Creekside held its breath. The once perfect image of the Fairweathers had been shattered, replaced by a tragic tale of love, betrayal, and the devastating consequences of choices made in moments of weakness. In their closing arguments, both the prosecution and defense made impassioned pleas to the jury. District Attorney Harding emphasized the gravity of Octavia's actions, urging the jury to uphold the law and send a message that violence is never an acceptable response, regardless of provocation. Defense attorney Thornton, on the other hand, appealed to the jury's empathy. She painted a vivid picture of a woman betrayed by the two people she trusted most, pushed beyond her limits by years of emotional turmoil. Octavia Fairweather is not a criminal, Thornton concluded. She is a victim of circumstances who acted in a moment of extreme emotional distress. We ask you to see her as she truly is, a good person who made a terrible mistake in the worst moment of her life. The jury's deliberation seemed to stretch on for an eternity. As hours turned into days, speculation ran rampant throughout Creekside. Supporters of Octavia held vigils outside the courthouse, while others demanded justice for Oscar. The case had divided the town, forcing everyone to confront uncomfortable truths about love, loyalty, and the human capacity for both compassion and betrayal. Finally, after four days of deliberation, the jury reached a verdict. As they filed back into the courtroom, the tension was palpable. Octavia sat at the defense table, her face pale and drawn, hands clasped tightly in her lap. Oscar, seated in the gallery, looked equally tense, his eyes fixed on his estranged wife. The judge called for order, and a hush fell over the courtroom. The four persons stood, ready to deliver a verdict that would determine the fate of Octavia Fairweather and forever change the landscape of Creekside. As the four person opened their mouth to speak, a collective hush fell over the courtroom. Would Octavia be convicted of attempted murder or would the jury see her as a victim of circumstances? And what of Oscar and Cordelia? Could they ever truly recover from the roles they played in this tragedy? The verdict was about to be revealed, but one thing was certain, the lives of everyone involved would never be the same again. The true cost of betrayal was about to be tallied and the price would be higher than anyone could have imagined. In that moment, as the first words of the verdict rang out, the fate of Octavia Octavia Fairweather hung in the balance, but regardless of the jury's decision, the repercussions of that fateful night would continue to ripple through Creekside for years to come. A stark reminder of how quickly a perfect life can unravel when trust is broken and love turns to betrayal. If you enjoyed this story, then make sure to check out the next one, shown on screen.